Within nearly all of their parks, Disney has used the one state-of-the-art personal conveyance system of many of their rides around the world. The system responsible for the doom buggies in the Haunted Mansion has been dubbed the Omni Mover System due to its endless chain of ride vehicles flowing through the show building. While the system is still used to this day in newer rides like the Seas with Nemo and Friends, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, and more, the mechanical system they all use is actually quite old, dating back to before 1968. While the patent was filed in that year for an opening of the Haunted Mansion in 1969, the system was considered to be ahead of its time, with its timeless versatility as mentioned. Every single day, thousands upon thousands of guests climb aboard these vehicles that can go up, down, and all around at a gentle pace taking us through immersive sets while also controlling our attention. In this video, I'll show you how the famous Omniweaver system works, how they managed to tilt, rotate, and open the restraints, and where I think some issues recently formed. So sit back, relax, or stand in a virtual queue line, which you're probably already doing, because this is how Disney's Omniweaver system works. The Omnimover system used is highly reliant on the rail system hidden under the floor. With the entire system sunk in about 2-3 feet into the floor, a shell cover keeps any loose items from falling into the system and obstructing its operation. Each car consists of a simple metal frame and light fiberglass polymer body bolted to the frame. There are no motors or mechanical electronics located inside of each vehicle. Each car on the system sits atop an H-shaped chassis with multiple guide wheels that follow the path of the two main guide rails. Two road wheels allow the chassis to remain on the rail, but also allow it to adjust up and down, and four guide wheels to ensure the chassis stays aligned with the additional hardware I'll talk about in a moment. As each chassis navigates a hill, the guide rail's vertical height increases to keep the guide wheels on the chassis from slipping out of the system. For added stability, there are two small wheels on the bottom of the car that engage with a stabilizing rail that exists in the load and unload areas to assure that the cars do not rotate or tilt during loading and unloading periods. So how does the ghost host lower your lap bar? Well, obviously he doesn't. Instead, a phantom spirit, I'm just kidding. Instead, a wheel bolted to a small pivot arm is located on the bottom of the car. When the car is in the loading area, the wheels collide with that same actuating rail used to stabilize the car. The rail forces the pivot arm to pull back on a spring-loaded shaft mechanism that forces the lap bar and cover out of the normally closed position and allows riders to enter or exit. When new riders are seated and about to enter the ride area, the actuating rail begins to slope downwards, allowing the spring connected to the pivot arm to take over and slowly lower the lap bar. Now that we are safely inside the car, it's now time to see how the Omnimover system navigates the layout of the ride. Each car in the chain of the system is set up trailer style, where each car is located at one side of a tubular support link. The other side of the link is connected via a ball joint to the next car link, and the connections repeat around the chain, allowing each car to support each other. Along the two-wheel link of the trailer, a grip plate is fixed vertically facing going downwards from the link. The grip plate with a rough textured surface allows drive motors with short rubber belts to grip and pinch the plate and push it along by. There are only drive motors on the straight sections of the course as the plates would not be graspable along a turn. Now that we understand the mechanical ways the entire chain of cars moves, we should now be able to move on to the more complicated side of the system. If you still have questions, you can leave them in the comments below. The Omnimover system's main feature is its ability to orient and position riders to where Imagineers want them to look. This helps convey the proper storyline and points out key details to riders by centering the focus on an area. This feature can also be used to safely move riders downhills as well. In order to orient guests during the ride, the Omnimover system employs another rail called the Pitch Orienting Rail. This is a T-shaped rail that is located above the guide rail. Unlike the guide rails of the main chassis, the rail slides along the layout in relation to the guide rails. 
To orient the pitch of the cars, the system must translate this varying position of the pitch orientation rail into a forward and back tilting motion. On the main chassis frame of the car, which rides on the guide rails, a Y-shaped joint is mounted to the chassis and allowed to pivot from near the lower end of the Y. At the two other ends of the Y-shaped piece are two wheels. Each of these wheels rides on one side of the pitch orientation rail and follows the varying position. This variance of the pitch orientation rail causes the piece to pivot. This pivot motion is then translated to rotate a rod or crank that passes through the chassis to the other side. On the other side, the rotation of the rod causes a crank to pull downward or force upward a large connecting link. This connecting link tilts or pitches the rider car that is fixed on a jointed post mounted to the chassis. However, this is not the only feature besides normal travel the system can perform. One of the most important features of the Omnimover system is its ability to rotate or pan riders left and right along the ride's layout. To achieve this motion, there are similar mechanics used in what is called the swivel orientation rail. Similar to the pitch orientation rail, this rail is also a T-shaped rail located above the guide rail as well on the other side. Just like the pitch rail, the swivel rail changes position in relation to the guide rail along the layout. Another Y-shaped joint with two wheels is fixed around the rail to follow the location of the rail as the chassis makes its way around the layout. The Y-shaped wheel assembly is fixed at the lower end of the Y and is allowed to pivot when the swivel rail moves location. However, this time the wheel assembly is keyed together to also force a section of a large radius gear to rotate along and swivel with the wheel assembly. This means that while the piece and large radius gear piece are separate, there's a small square rod called a key that mechanically locks the two pieces together. When the swivel wheel assembly is forced to pivot by the swivel orientation rail, the key that has locked the gear and wheel assembly together causes the gear to rotate. This gear meshes with a smaller radius gear that peeks out from the bottom of the car mounting post, which is hollow. This gear turns a rod and at the point where the pitch mechanics tilt the car forward is a universal joint. This joint is designed to allow rotation of two ends regardless of the pitch or tilt angle the car is at. Therefore, it allows the two mechanisms to manipulate the car's orientation regardless of each other, eliminating any mechanical interference. Since the pitch and swivel orientation rails can slide around throughout the layout, this allows for a wide range of motion that allows Imagineers to mechanically program in where they want riders facing. While the system is not as smooth as more technologically advanced systems seen elsewhere, it is an incredibly reliable system. Most of the time. Recently, the Haunted Mansion at the Magic Kingdom shut down when multiple cars were found to not be rotating into the proper orientations, causing cars to navigate the hills facing the wrong way. My guess is that the issue lies with the swivel orientation assembly. Remember that piece called the key that mechanically bonds the wheel assembly and gear together since they're two separate pieces? Through my analysis, I have a sneaking suspicion that those keys are very old and prone to shearing or cracking in the middle. Of course, the keys won't shear with a flat, even fracture surface, but in a rough manner. This means that the two pieces were loosely rotating with each other, if at all, during points of the ride, causing the cars to become even more misaligned. These keys are likely not replaced very often, as they are located in a very inaccessible area right underneath the swivel orientation rail. New versions of the Omnimover system also have audio and the ability to ensure lap bars aren't opened during the ride through communication connections called bus bars along the ride. The newer systems can likely also communicate wirelessly, reducing points of failure, which bus bars can be. A car's audio can also be triggered by cues along the ride path that start certain pieces of the soundtrack. This ingenious Omnimover system is not only reliable since it relies heavily on mechanical movement, but allows for a wide range of versatility when designing the various dark rides given its capabilities. 
I hope you enjoyed this small dive into how Disney's famous Omni River system works. If you still have questions, you can ask them below, and if you'd like to take a look at the patents with all the technical drawings, which are actually pretty neat, you can find them in the description. Let me know what your favorite ride is, and I might try to make a video on it. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and don't forget to enable all notifications to get alerted when a new video comes out. If you would like to support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon, a link for which is below. I'll be creating a small model of the system in the coming weeks, and I'll share the progress through my Instagram. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the parks.